Hey there, guys. Project in the shop today are these old electromechanical cruise control uh, modules. Started using these in the late 50s and went on through the 60s. Look inside, see how they work, and see what it's going to take to uh, rebuild one and get it into perfect working order. And so this will be probably be a multiple part video. First of all, today we're going to tear into it. And as we're tearing into it, I'll explain how the mechanism works. And then we'll um, figure out what we need to do to uh, freshen everything up. We'll do a video on that. Then we'll do a final video with a test where we're actually running a um, simulating the vehicle moving. We'll hook a speedometer up. And we'll watch how everything works. They're quite fascinating units. So the first thing to look at on the unit, just when you got one in your hand, is the um, connector here for the power and ground. There's basically, uh, the, the three connections are uh, switched ignition, then there is switched 12 volt power from the um, uh, brake light switch. So that if you hit the brakes, it uh, takes power from this unit, makes the cruise control drop out. And the third is the ground that is, um, connected to the on off switch on the dash. So th this is a place to check if you're having trouble with your cruise control to make sure that you have um, two constant powers when the um, ignition is on and that one of them goes away when the, when the brakes are pressed and that the other switches to ground with the switch on the dash. Linkage to the carburetor goes here. This is the uh, input from the transmission. That's your output to the speedometer. Then this here is to the uh, speed selector knob on the dash. Cable operated and it pulls this in and out. So let's take the cover off and see what's inside. The um, basic uh, parts of the mechanism is right here is the uh, governor. So it has these weights. They're spun by the uh, input shaft, the input cable from the transmission. As they spin faster, they pull out and push this sleeve back and forth, which goes over to this set of switch contacts. This lever here is pushed in and out by the control knob on the dash. And that's, as it applies more force to the um, governor, it takes more speed to push the, the weights out. This mechanism here is what latches the motor shaft to the, um, and its mechanism to the actual throttle. So that this would be when it's turned off, it's free to operate. Then when it's turned on, this gets latched in. And now the throttle is gonna be controlled by the, mo by the motor. These contacts are the ones that move with the governor. As this whole unit goes this way, that pulls the throttle more open. As it goes this way, it pulls the throttle more closed. So when this contact here, uh, so that, that's what these do is they select which direction the motor cut turns to accelerate or decelerate the car. That's the cutout for 85 miles an hour. The cruise control won't work at a, at a speed over 85. So now you don't have to try. Well, maybe you will want to try, who knows. Uh, so what we need to do, get in here, uh, take it apart. All the bearing surfaces are all dry. You need to go in here, take it apart, clean it up and put it back together and test it. And there's not a lot of information out on these. So this is sort of a, in a way, a, a tear down video and a learning experience for myself. Normally when I show you guys how to rebuild something, I've already done it at least once. So this is gonna be how we, how we take it apart, how we figure out what we're gonna do to it and what a rebuilding process entails for this or a refurbishing process. First thing I'm gonna do is start to work on this uh, terminal plate. Disconnect this. And you'll wanna take notes or take pictures. Of course, um, I have video here, so it makes it a little bit easier for figuring out how things go back together. This 
bottom wire goes to the motor and this upper wire goes to the switch mechanism. Take this plunger out of here. I say, of course, take lots and lots of pictures. If we go over to this side here, we can get to the, this is the socket where the cable to the speedometer plugs in. To do here now is get this uh, governor mechanism apart so we can remove remove the governor uh, weights and everything been got a, a press fit this is a nylon shaft so maybe we're just going to leave that one in place we risk breaking it trying to get it apart we can put we can get this cleaned up and get some lubricant in there when the time comes so let's pull this snap ring off where this collar pivots you gotta push that bring it out like that then we can lift this collar off a block of wood here give this a little tap there we go sleeve has a um, stainless washer pressed onto it. Use this punch. There we go. We got the governor knocked out. Pretty simple. See as the weights fly out, pushes that sleeve. Bronze uh, bushing on the uh, inside. And we get here and, and a little sealed on uh, sealed up on one side ball bearing. That's good. You can get it, look at all the junk and look at that grease. is like so. take some scotch bright clean all this up soak this bearing clean it up the side that does have a cover is the side that goes out the open side goes to the inside I'm gonna leave this one in place I think it's too much of a risk to try to get it out we might break it this mechanism with the lock-in coil and the contacts is screwed to the chassis by these three screws which are blocked by this lever so there is likely a set screw hidden underneath this spring so i'm going to very carefully remove the spring keeping track of 
how far this comes back when it, when it, when the when the tension's released, so that we know how much force this spring is supposed to be exerting. the black wire that's coming over here to the uh, this terminal looks like the way we took that apart is going to be about the only way you can take it apart so on this this unit here what we'll do is we'll make electrical checks of the coils We'll burnish the contacts and um, lubricate everything. Put this, get this all degreased, cleaned all up real nice. So right here we have the, the motor. This is the little block that these fingers engage into that moves, that causes when this is in lockup, when, the, when this block moves back and forth on the worm, on the worm gear there, it rocks this whole mechanism like this to move the throttle. It looks like we got pretty much a standard little um, motor here, like we've seen a lot of, uh, like we've seen in the um, seat transmissions and such. We want to be careful. We do if the you're, if the motor's running good. We don't want to disturb it. And what we don't want to do is have this motor come apart. We're going to go put this motor on a power supply and see how it runs. If it runs good, we're going to leave well enough alone. So we got the motor here from the cruise control. The green wire is the ground. The black and red, each one of them is one of the two directions. So and we're noting about a 1.3 amp current draw. We are kind of high voltage there, 14.2. Back that down. 13 volts, about 1.3 amps in that direction. 1.3 amps the other direction. This motor is sounding pretty good. So one, one and a quarter to one and a half amps current draw. You can use that as reference on yours. This motor here, uh, I would probably just go ahead and run it as is. I tried to get some lubricant down this end, but um, I'm gonna take this over to the bench. I am gonna disassemble it. This is a really well-designed motor. I took and I snooped in it. Uh, before we started filming this, so take the screws out. This end just slides right off. Can't get in any trouble taking this end off, except for losing the, the washers down here. The two uh, red and black wire with this. Um, lugs will come through the hole. This one here will not fit. So this is kind of, this cover is kind of tethered. Bronze bushing, easy to lubricate. Knock those washers out of there. We got a stainless steel washer and a fiber washer. Okay, so this end, we just have the, uh, a, a thin, very thin, like fiber paper washer and two stainless steel shim washers. They're stuck together. I'm gonna slip this cover back on. We don't wanna lose those, get them out of order. Cover is um, 
indexed. Okay, hold on to the end of the motor shaft while taking this end off. Or maybe it's even best to leave that cover off, get a good purchase on the, on the motor. Because we don't want to pull the armature out and, and screw up the brushes. Towards here is a single thick washer. And here is two thins with a fiber in between. So you clean this up, lub lubricate it like you would any other small motor. So that's what's inside of here. Just you know, ins inspect the armature. Everything looks good in this motor. So I'll just lubricate it, call it good. But that's how you can take it apart without having it fall apart. So actually for a device, it seems to be kind of a, seems like it ought to be a rather complex uh, device is really pretty simple me mechanically. We don't have a lot of parts spread out here on the bench. You can unscrew this block. So it can be cleaned up and lubricated. Once this gets to the end of its motion, it's got like a clutch in there. Okay. You got a plug. You got another little uh, bearing. washers and a little cage with um, ball bearings in it. Like I say guys, I've never had one of these apart. I don't know if any of you guys have. If you have, leave any comments that might help me get this thing put together and, and make sure it's all going to run properly. I don't know if this is going to be critical like a starter drive with the type of grease. There's something interesting that goes on here when those, when that, when these little tabs hit the pin. Where once that tab hits that pin, they can feel a change, they can feel some drag, and then the shaft free wheels in that direction. Turn it the other way, and it goes. Interesting. Hope this helps you guys uh, tackle any uh, cruise control problems and been kind of neat to dig into. So we'll see you next time when we'll put it all back together again. Fine Village is a great organization that gives back to the community. Check it out. You'll see so as well. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Sonnen Kirsten. We're here at the 2018 Vine Village Celebration, our major fundraiser here that helps fund programs that we run for people with developmental disabilities here in the greater Napa community. Vine Village was founded by my family and another family, each who had children with disabilities in 1972. And we depend on donations from all sorts of foundations and individuals and businesses throughout our community to help fund these programs and this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. You can donate by clicking the link in the video description. Thank you.